the North Sea rages. The foaming waves gnaw at Jutland's dunes. North of Skagen, in Grenen, the sea builds Denmark's newest land, a wilderness where Denmark's nature is free to roam. The waves create a landscape of sand dunes and lagoons. They're called ridges and swales. On Skagen's point, some plants have been able to evolve independently from the rest of the world. They say that these species are endemic, which means Skagen helleborine, Nordic blueberry eyebright, and the Vensusel orchid are found only in Denmark. The EU asked Denmark to designate the country's most valuable natural areas. Greenen has been included in this designation, which makes it part of the EU's Natura 2000 sites. A little further south lies one of Europe's largest June heaths, Robjerg Heath and Hulsi Heath. They are also Natura 2000 sites. The Robiag dune lies on this enormous heath. For more than 400 years, Northern Europe's largest migrating dune has been shifting. The moment a grain of sand is dry, the wind takes hold of it. The dune lives and breathes. The sea, the waves, and the current. The sun, wind, and sand jointly create a momentum in nature that is rarely allowed to express itself. But it does so at Grenen and on Robjerg and Hulsi Heath. Without this momentum, the habitats of some of our most unique plants and animals would disappear. They would die out. The moist heath is a paradise for cranes, which as early in the year as February-March, herald the coming of spring to Skagen's Point. Robiag June spreads death and destruction before it. Nothing survives 40 years in the sand's embrace. Nevertheless, the June drags a trace of life across Skagen's point. The sand desert turns into a haven for those species which were the first to occupy the land and are adapted to a life in which nutrients are not a given. From the dune, you can hear the sure sign of spring, the croak of the natterjack toad. When a dune migrates, it also leaves two long sand dunes. Like the beach dunes, they are called ridges. On Hulsi Heath lies a ridge left behind by a giant dune that once migrated across Skagen's point, torn back a ridge. In a small windbreak, something is moving. Something that digs small pits in the sand. It is a larva of an antlion. The antlion's larva has developed its very own unique hunting technique. It's digging a small funnel in the sand. The ant crawls into the funnel. The antlion gets the sides to tumble down by digging and throwing the sand up onto the ant. The ant tries to get up, but there's no turning back. In the sand, ants cannot defend themselves. The ant must give up.
In a belt running along Zealand, Anholt, Leisu and Skagen Point, there is less than half the amount of rainfall as in the rest of Denmark. There are more hours of sunshine in the desert belt. The Nordic antlion lives on the desert belt because the microclimate of the Earth's surface here is warmer than the rest of the country. Tornbacher Ridge, along with large parts of the heath, is about to turn into forest land. Mountain firs block the sunlight of the mosses, lichen, and the antlion's habitat with their shadow. Vi har sat det her projekt i gang fordi skagen og grenen hulse i hede rummer noget helt fantastisk dansk oprindelig natur, som er troet af tilgroning med udenlandske træarter. Og får vi en tilgroning med udenlandske træarter, så er der ikke de rigtige insekter med, der er ikke de rigtige småfugle med. The first task will be to remove the forests within the heath. Slowly the sun will return to the forest floor, and in time, the light will cause the June heath plants to return. Der har været plantet rigtig meget ikke hjemmehørende på Skagen Åde. Og med det her projekt, der prøver vi at få de store kager væk, sådan at vi får stanset frøsbredning. Det er rigtig vigtigt for os. Og det gælder både de eksotiske fyrearter, grænarterne og også sådan noget som rynket rose. The only place where the marsh fritillary butterfly has survived in Denmark is in northern Jutland. It is one of Denmark's rare butterflies. All butterflies are associated with one plant, a plant that they lay eggs on and that their larvae can eat. The marsh fritillary's plant is the scabious. The plant's habitat has disappeared, and this has meant that the marsh fritillary population has declined tremendously. Out along the west coast, on a 30-kilometer-long coastline on Hirtshals, lives one of Denmark's most rare butterflies, the northern brown Argus butterfly. Today, it can be found in only a few places along the coast. The northernmost is here, right behind the outermost range of dunes at Skiveren. The brown Argus's larvae feed on the bloody geranium, and that is being supplanted by the invasive beech rose, or rosehip, as it's also called. The black-brown argus, like many of the plants in Skagen's Point, evolved endemically. Its appearance is different from those found elsewhere in the world. The Danish variant has a few black spots on the underside of the wings. Where the bloody geranium belongs in Denmark, the beech rose comes from Japan. It has no problem with standing the hard and salty winds on the coast. Large dune areas along the west coast of Jutland have already been taken over by the Japanese rose. The battle against the rose is a difficult one, not least in the trackless dunes. Today, the sand dunes days are over in Kattegat. Nature has let itself run wild in the dunes footprints. Here, we find a myriad of rare species. The dune tiger beetle is a very fast insect of prey that can catch insects in the air. But the labyrinth spider won't be enjoying anything today. It is also seldom that we find plants like the northern fir moss, a small and common fir moss. Carnivorous plants such as the round leaf and spoon leaf sundew. The sundew obtains additional nutrients from the insects it catches on its sticky leaves. The carnivorous plants can grow where other plants cannot find nourishment. The Danish orchids also fare well in the nutrient poor environment. The lesser butterfly orchid, western marsh orchid, and the early marsh orchid. Cotton grass seeds are released in the summer, an impressive sight in the damp areas. 
The skylark, which was once Denmark's most common bird, enjoys the many insects. Once the female lays eggs, it takes only 20 days for the young to leave the nest. The red-back shrike is one of those rare birds on Hulsey Heath and Greenan. The newly created lands of Greenan are also shaping up. The willow and beech rows are about to turn off the lights for many of the orchids that grow in between the dunes. Fredericksham Municipality has made a path through the bushes. This has made room for the dunes' rare wintergreen plants. The small and rare plant sprouts up as evidence of the benefit of removing the invasive roses. The heather is also rejuvenated by frequent wildfires and in August, the heather bushes spring into bloom. The trees on the heath are made into wood chips and driven to the power plants in containers. While the project progresses, briefings are held, where we hear about the background of the project. Tingsmænden har tidligere været en meget hyppig ynglefugl på hederne, fugtige heder, men er nu næsten væk. Vi kender ingen steder her i området, hvor den findes. Der er nemlig det specielle ved den, at hvis man har trævækster, der rager ret meget op i landskabet en meters penge, så bygger den ikke sin rede inden for en afstand af 200-300 meter. In the dune lakes, one can see the wood sandpiper. Today, there are less than 100 breeding pairs left in Denmark. The old drainage channels must be stopped so that water remains on the heath. Animals must graze on the heath, which keeps the trees down and rejuvenates the heather. The mountain firs have spread all over the heath. The project is progressing. The invasive conifers felled, and in many places, they need only to be chipped. Flying forest and other small groves have disappeared. Thornbacker Ridge is cleared. The largest ridge is once again visible in the landscape. The antlion's larvae have made their cocoons. The pupae are round and camouflaged with sand. One dark night, they hatch. The adult antlion pumps its wings up. The antlion is a nocturnal insect, an insect few have seen, but part of the diversity, the biodiversity, which belongs to Denmark. På den lange bane er håbet, at vi har et stykke natur herude kun med hjemmehørende arter. Det der hører hjemme på de her klitheder, orkiderne, frøer, tuser, fireben. Så den der situation med en klithede, der ligger åben i harmoni med sig selv, med en meget rig biodiversitet, det er det, vi håber, vi har genskabt her.